The Indigo Disc DLC for Scarlet and Violet is finally here! And today, I'll be spending 24 hours shiny hunting all the new and returning Pokemon. Starting off with this amazing Alolan Executor, who only took 6 minutes to find. He was one of my most highly anticipated hunts for this update. And let's just say, most of the other shinies available in this DLC are at least A tier. Considering how quick of a hunt Executor was, just imagine how many new shinies we're going to be able to pull in 24 hours. For those who are unaware, the setting for this new DLC is in a man-made terrarium underwater, and it's split off into four quadrants, each with their own environments and set of Pokemon it can spawn. And to start off our second hunt, we'd be heading into my favorite location, the coastal biome, so we'd be able to hunt for a Cotney. I couldn't wait to get this one because I'm absolutely in love with this evolution shiny, Whimsicott, and using fairy encounter boosts at the top of the coastal biome allowed me to exclusively isolate the spawns to this fluffy cloud Pokemon. Now, Cotney shiny is amazing as is, but I just just couldn't wait to evolve it and tick off another highly anticipated hunt. He also had a lunchtime mark, which is cool and also convenient, seeing as with these two shinies added to our collection, we can tick off a bunch of our 67 goals for this video. Those goals include catching a shiny Pokemon of every type, catching one from every generation, catching a full box of shinies, and getting 10 marked shinies. And if I don't complete all of these goals in 24 hours, I'll have to surprise trade away every shiny I find in this video. So there's a lot on the line. These two Pokemon alone actually managed to tick off 8 of the 67 goals, which may seem like a lot at first, but the more goals that are ticked off, the harder it's going to get to tick off more. Especially since I was basing my hunts off stuff I was excited to get, and not on stuff that would help mark the objectives off. And damn, you're going to be hearing this a lot throughout this video, but this next target is one that I literally could not wait to hunt. Comfy! This absolutely amazing flower baby is a Pokemon I've wanted to shiny hunt for literally years, and by using the isolation hunting method, that wish was granted in just 13 minutes. I know it doesn't change too much from the original, but this is literally the perfect shade of blue. And mixed with the red, yellow, pink, and white flowers, it honestly might be in the top 10 most aesthetic shinies of all time. I cannot stress how immaculate this looks. Next, I decided to hunt for a Duraludon, because it's actually got a really cool new evolution, Archiludon. Now, I normally wouldn't be too thrilled to be hunting this Iron Beast, because his shiny is pretty horrible, barely changing at all. But his evolution actually looks quite nice. However, the problem with this hunt is that the lighting in this game can make Pokemon with metallic textures look so different, depending on what angle you're looking at them. And considering we're hunting for a shiny that barely changes, you can imagine how much I needed to glue my eyes to the screen to not miss it. However, I've been doing this for a long time now. I know when a Pokemon looks different. So after spotting him, we had crossed the one hour mark and caught our third shiny. We then evolved her into the amazing Archiludon and it looks so good. Speaking of new evolutions, Diplin actually got one too, which is really cool because he's a new evolution of Applin from the last DLC in the Teal Mask. So I took my golden apple that I got during that 24 hour shiny hunting challenge, and after teaching it Dragon Cheer, we managed to evolve him into this absolutely amazing Hydrapple, which is one of the coolest Pokemon ever. Like, come on, a five headed dragon worm apple? What's not to love about this? Back to the actual hunting, I was really hyped to see Milsery returning because our creamy and its billion forms are so cool. Now, I spent eight Ages looking for this pretty difficult to spot shiny in the polar biome with encounter boosts, and the shiny just would not show up. It took me around 50 minutes to realize that there was actually an event going on in game that makes Milsery outbreaks extremely common, and with the right conditions, it could have the shiny rate boosted to like 1 in 150, which is insane. So the second I connected to the internet to activate this event, I instantly found an outbreak, and the shiny popped up in no more than 5 minutes. If only I remembered earlier. So I gave it a strawberry sweet, spun myself around, and evolved it into the amazing looking Grey Alcremie. A little over two hours into this challenge and we've now ticked off 15 of our 67 goals. Now again, that may seem like a lot of progress for such little time, but just you wait until the end because it gets uncomfortably close. And remember, failure leads to getting rid of every shiny I find today. Despite how much I love the coastal area, I needed to get some more variety and moved on to the savannah biome and hunted for the epic Gen 1 Metallic Rhino. I used rock type boosts for the isolation method to exclusively spawned them everywhere, and it took roughly an hour to find, but it was totally worth it because I really like this bronze look to it. She also had an uncommon mark, and although I had already found the Alolan evolution, I just had to hunt for the Golden Execute next, because I absolutely love this Pokemon. Definitely in my top 10 for Generation 1. He was a much quicker hunt than our previous, only taking around 15 minutes. And then our next hunt was pretty funny, because as I was looking for yet another Golden Shiny, this one being the Dopey Galarian Slowpoke, I was circling this beach for over 
half an hour with nothing but him spawning everywhere. Yet I somehow managed to bump into a shiny Inkay. I was more than thrilled about this, however, because he has without a doubt one of the best looking Gen 6 shinies. Now I would turn my switch upside down to evolve him, but Malamar's shiny is honestly quite a downgrade in my opinion. The slowpoke still took me quite a while to find, but it was totally worth the wait for this amazing mustard looking dude. Esper was up next, and I honestly think it's a pretty underrated Pokemon. I adore both its male and female evolutions, and the shinies are fantastic as well. Psychic boosts in the coastal area allowed me to isolate the spawns, and after around half an hour, we managed to find this little pink cat. We could also tick off another one of our marked shiny goals, seeing as she also carried an uncommon mark. Continuing with the theme of great shinies, we headed back into the savannah and hunted for a trap inch. I absolutely love this little guy, and something else I love is how we managed to find this amazing teal shiny in just 20 minutes. Makes you wonder why he wasn't available in the teal mask, huh? And of course, we had to evolve him into Vibrava and then into the amazing looking Flygon. This one also had an uncommon mark, which is insane. And on the topic of finding shinies quickly, I found this lime green Doduo after 10 minutes of searching and then moved on to the polar biome to hunt for a purple Lapras and found him in just three minutes. That is absolutely insane. And can I just say, shiny Lapras is just incredible. Sorry if you're getting sick of me complimenting every shiny I find, but this DLC just brought back so many absolute bangers. Oh, and as if we weren't getting enough Mark shinies super quickly, Lapras also had an uncommon mark. It's really living up to its name, huh? Here's another look at our progress so far. Six hours in and 37 of the 67 goals have been ticked off, which is actually pretty good and quite a relief. But now we're going to be running into more Pokemon that overlap with goals that we've already completed. And again, I wasn't really focused on the quests because my brain was too focused on getting the shinies I was excited to hunt. Our next hunt was actually super interesting because it was for a Pokemon whose identity isn't truly revealed until it uses its ability. Minior the Meteor Pokemon. Basically, in the overworld, he's covered with a shell, and the only way to see what's under the shell is if it uses its shield's down ability, in which it reveals which of the seven colors he is. I absolutely love this Pokemon and think he's incredibly underrated and forgotten. And well, the same thing could be said about his shiny, giving him an awesome eighth black color. However, with his shell on, there's no way of telling if he's a shiny or not. So if you've watched my other shiny hunting videos, you'll know it's kind of a similar scenario with Ditto or Zoroa, where you can't see if they're shiny until you actually start battling them. So the solution is to use the auto battle feature, where your Pokemon will instantly KO anything in its path. And one of the greatest features of this game is the fact that auto battling will refuse to kill a shiny. This means we have to use the isolation method in the spot to spawn as many mini as possible, and basically just keep fighting them until my Iron Valiant holds back. It definitely makes the hunt a lot slower than normal, but it's actually quite satisfying. After around an hour and 15 minutes, we eventually had a halt to our massacre and found this little shiny meteorite. Unfortunately, you can't get the shiny sparkles without the shell on, but when he eventually took it off, I could not believe how amazing he looked, and I was so hyped to finally be able to add this beauty to my collection. Next, I was kind of doing a jewel hunt for either a Scraggy or a Tyrogue, seeing as fighting type boosts would spawn both of them in this location, and I ended up finding two of the blue pants fighters within 10 minutes of each other, one of them having a peeved mark. And then my next hunt was actually pretty special to me, because it was for the first Pokemon I ever attempted to shiny hunt, Dupider. Such an awesome Pokemon with a crazy cool evolution. I remember him being one of my favorite Pokemon ever after playing Moon for the first time back in 2016. And after seeing how perfect his shiny looked, I attempted my first ever shiny hunt. Did I ever manage to get him? Absolutely not. I literally tried the old school encounter method for like half an hour and just instantly gave up, having no clue how people had the patience for shiny hunting. And to this day, I've still never owned one. So I guess you can say that this has been roughly seven years in the making. And when I finally found that purple and orange water spider, I could not have been more happy. Just look me in the eyes and tell me this is a bad shiny. You literally can't. We then evolved her into the terrifying looking Araquanid, and she also had a ferocious mark, which is fitting based on its design. Next, I did my first outbreak hunt for a while, seeing as I couldn't find an effective spot to isolate Snubble. I actually don't really like this Pokemon at all, but the color palette for the shiny is actually really good, so that's why I decided to hunt for this ugly dog. I then moved on to Pikapek, whose shiny isn't anything special, however, for its evolution's Trumbeak and Toucanon, the color of their beaks totally changed, which I've always loved. And as if we weren't getting enough uncommon marks, this bird carried one as well. Next up was also a jewel hunt for a Minchino as well as Porygon. I wanted both of them pretty equally, but Porygon was a much rarer spawn, so after half an hour, we ended up finding this pink chinchilla. Nothing too special going on with this shiny, but this Pokemon and its evolution Chinchino are so freaking cute, so I just had to get one. Also, what is 
going on? Our mark lock is insane because she also had a snowy mark. I then did my first hunt in the charged stone cavern for a drill bar, which was also kind of special, seeing as Pokemon Black was my first ever Pokemon game. And the charged stone cavern is literally a location from that game, seeing as the terrarium is set in Unova. And not only that, I've got a special connection to Drill Bar, seeing as Excadrill was the first Pokemon I ever got to level 100, which was something super special and much harder back in the older games. Although Shiny Drill Bar looks really cool, I love Excadrills, so I ended up evolving her. Continuing with Gen 5 Pokemon, it was time to hunt for that slimy fetus. <laughs> That's not a sentence I ever thought I'd say, but how else would you describe this evolution line? Now, I absolutely love the Solosis family, so I was eager to find this Shiny. Unfortunately, it's surprisingly hard to spot the change for Solosis, but my Shiny hunting trained eyes was easily able to spot the difference. So I evolved it into a Duosian and then into Reuniclus, where the Shiny looks much better. And literally, as I was exploring to see what other Pokemon I wanted to hunt, the remaining time on my Psychic Boost made me find a second batch of Golden Execute. Awesome, we can get a regular Shiny Executor now. Here's another quick update on how we've been going so far. We've only just crossed the 12 hour mark and we've already ticked off 54 of our 67 goals. You may think it's gonna be a clean sweep from now on, but I'll just say, due to me neglecting the goals, it literally ends up coming down to the final 30 minutes. Next on my list of a million Pokemon I've been excited to hunt for in this DLC would have to be the big man himself, Grimace. <coughs> I mean, Alolan Grimer, a really cool regional form that changes the shiny back to its original purple color. It was then time to hunt for the Gen 3 baby pseudo legendary, Beldum. His shiny is super clean, turning him from blue to silver. However, due to his metallic textures and being in the snowy biome, there were so many times where his normal form actually looked like the shiny because of the lighting. I was literally tricked like six or seven times, but thankfully the hunt only took 10 minutes. We then evolved him into Matang and then into the awesome silver Metagross. I then decided to hunt for a shiny Golet because I absolutely love his purple shiny. Except, hold on, that's not his shiny. This is. Ugh. For some reason, I was like a thousand percent confident that this is what a shiny looked like. And when I went to look him up just to check, I was so disappointed to see this gross green shade for the lights. You cannot tell me this color palette isn't better suited for him. I actually ended up finding a shiny Golurk instead, which is fine by me, and I ended up getting a really hard shot with him and his son. Do not talk to me or my son ever again. All right, this next shiny is one that I've yet again been absolutely dying to get. And it's one that might actually be in my top 10 favorite shinies of all time. Shiny Blossom. Look how unbelievably perfect she looks. I need her right now. And thankfully on this beach with grass type boosts on, as well as this outbreak I found, we could get plenty of this adorable dancing flower to spawn everywhere. I was on edge waiting to see this majestic shiny spawn. However, the game decided to tease me seeing it took an hour and a half to find, but the wait was totally worth it. And anyone who thinks this is a bad shiny is objectively wrong and needs to seek help. Okay, I'll stop now. I think I got my point across. I also really wanted its original Pokemon in the family, Oddish. However, I couldn't exclusively spawn him anywhere and I wasted like 45 minutes looking for an outbreak and just never got one. So moving on to a different poison type, I hunted for Hisui and Quillfish. Such an awesome addition from Legends Arceus with his shiny going from black to white. Thankfully, this hunt took no longer than five minutes and I decided to go back for Oddish again. This time I just used poison boosts and although I would get other Pokemon like Grimer, Muck and Gloom spawning, I was lucky enough to find exactly who I was looking for. I then decided I wanted to go back to hunting for a Porygon and just accepted the high chance of finding another Minchino. But after getting nothing from my first sandwich, I moved back to the savannah and found an outbreak of a different normal type, Tauros. This shiny is a disgusting lime green, but for some reason I actually kind of like it. And he was also another victim of the uncommon Mark tribe. After date skipping for a Porygon outbreak, I ended up spotting a Smeargle one and decided I might as well try hunt him whilst he's there. He was also a super quick hunt, only taking 10 minutes off our timer, setting us at almost 18 hours now. I then wasted like half an hour looking for this stupid Porygon outbreak. I just wanted a Porygon. And that's when I realized how much of an idiot I was. Because I could have sworn I already had Porygon added to the Pokedex, but it turns out I didn't. And didn't consider the fact that these question mark outbreaks could be for Porygon. I was so dumb, but like I could have sworn I caught him. And even though I've already spent a lot of this challenge just setting up this hunt, I was getting no luck finding the shiny. I spent almost two hours hunting with absolutely nothing to show for it. But eventually, I managed to find the blue and purple robot thingy. And right as I threw the Pokeball to catch him, I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. 
<gasps> was that another Porygon in the background? J like shiny? Oh my god, I think it was. Yep, that's a second shiny off in the distance. Okay, that makes up for all the hassle it was to finally find him. Here's one more quick update of what goals we've completed. 20 hours in and we've only got three of the 67 tasks remaining. Them being catch a shiny electric type, fire type, and a generation 4 Pokemon. Surely I won't notice that I haven't completed everything in the final hour, right? Luckily, I could tick off one of those three goals pretty quickly, considering my next shiny was for this orange Alolan Geodude, who looks nothing like an electric type, but actually is. These next few shinies aren't anything too special, and we're just returning Pokemon to this DLC who I didn't have yet. They would include Horsey, Seal, and Tentacool. And well, I'm literally only just realizing this as I'm scripting the video, but shiny hunting this much in such a short time period actually made me forget that I got a shiny Oddish earlier, because I literally just started hunting for him again. I actually can't believe I forgot I had one, considering it wasn't even that long ago we got that first one. I then found a golden Swablu whilst moving to my next hunting location, and I'm pleasantly surprised that this was our first shiny we've found that wasn't new to this DLC. And then, I moved on to what I thought was going to be my final hunt for the video. The hunt for Scraggy. He doesn't have the greatest shiny in the world, but I absolutely love this Pokemon, and his evolution Scrafty gets green pants after evolving. My boy's got Drip! The best way to hunt for him was using fighting type boosts in the grassy area of the canyon biome. He ended up taking roughly an hour and a bit to find, and after evolving him, I came to the realization that I was yet to find a fire type as well as any Gen 4 Pokemon somehow, and there was only 45 minutes remaining. Okay, I know it was stupid of me to leave the final goals to last minute, but I generally thought I had everything by now. And to be fair, there was literally only 8 Generation 4 Pokemon that returned in this DLC, with only 2 of them that can be caught in the wild, the rest are evolutions, so give me a break. There was no way I was going to lose all my progress because of these 2 challenges, so I had to start hunting for someone who could meet both of those requirements, as well as be easy enough to hopefully find in less than 45 minutes. Now what Pokemon would that be? Magby or Magmar? They're both fire types, they evolve into Magmortar from Generation 4, and they're new to the DLC for this game. So I speed ran making a fire boosting sandwich as quick as humanly possible, and headed to the savannah to test my luck. I was getting a pretty nice lot of them both spawning, however I'd also be seeing heaps of Litleo and Pyroar, which I was just praying wouldn't be the shiny instead. 30 minutes remained and we were yet to see what we were looking for. There is no way I have to give up everything I found in this video, right? But thankfully, with literally 12 minutes remaining, we managed to find a shiny magma, which came in so clutch. So I evolved them into Magmortar, and we had completed every goal for this challenge, and had spent 24 hours shiny hunting in the Indigo Disc. This was such a fun challenge, and if you're wondering why I didn't shiny hunt any of the starters, well, let's just say that might be the topic of my next video.